Sig Talk, Episode 014, Sigafoos' Last Consultation Call, 2014. Hello, and welcome to Sig Talks with your host, Dr. Carrie Sigafoos, your home for the chiropractic philosophy, where we discuss the teachings of Dr. James Sigafoos, from his writings to his talks and his many audio presentations. I went back and forth about releasing this next consultation call, seeing that it was my father's last call. But in the end, after listening to it four or five times, I realized something. My father's passion and his explanation of how to express the chiropractic story never changes. In all the audios I have listened to over the past six months, his explanation of chiropractic and how to improve not only your practice, but your life as well, never ever changes. The entire audio is about 40 minutes in total, and what you're about to hear is only 16 to 17 minutes of it. So with that, here is Sigafoos and his last consultation call to all his clients on the Sigafoos system. Well, let's let's start out here with with this idea. Uh, I, first of all, I'm going to come up with two things now. Uh that are, happen to be my observation. Number one, I notice that we are not getting near the so-called miraculous changes or miraculous happenings in chiropractic as we once did. So with all this education that's being forced upon us, why are we not able to do more than the people who had less education? And, and I can tell you that we don't have the kind of changes that we should have. And the reason is the schools. That's, that's the real reason, plus the fact that some of the people who have been out of school for a while have sort of forgotten what they learned and, uh, or didn't learn in school and started learning stuff that they shouldn't have learned. And so what we have a tendency to be doing is we, we're, we're leaning more toward therapy and more toward medicine than, than ever before. And in the state of New Mexico, they just most recently have allowed to pass a law stating that they can, uh, chiropractors can write prescriptions now. And they are, now they're working on uh, to advance that law so they can do IVs. And uh, so what's that got to do with chiropractic? And how many medical doctors do we have that, that can write prescriptions, that can do IVs, that can do all the stuff that, chiro- that chiropractors want to do and shouldn't be doing? And, and so here's the thing, when, when, we, when we are not philosophically sound and we're not aware of the principle and we haven't learned anything about innate and if we have, we've forgotten it and we're not real sure about our subluxation uh, and, and what we do, I find, and I see so many chiropractors pulling on legs, arms, hands, wrists, going up and down the spine like they're playing a xylophone and, and there's nothing specific at all about that. And it's the specific adjustment that makes the changes, and it's, it's, it's making one specific adjustment in the spine. Now, here's the deal. We don't get the, the, the results that we should be getting. I'm talking about miraculous changes, cancers, blind eyes, deaf ears, colitis, disease, lung problems, stomach ulcers, skin conditions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're not clearing up on a, uh, in the average chiropractic office. And they're not clearing up uh, to any frequency, if, if at all. And, and it's simply because we are not sound philosophically, we're not sound in our adjustment, and we're in a busy. See, what we've trained ourselves or allowed ourselves to be caught up in the idea that once we know what somebody's complaint is and we listen to that complaint, and let's say it's a low back. If somebody complains about their low back, then we start to focus on the low back. And we start punch it, roll it, squeeze it, hop it, skip it, cool it, freeze it, do everything we can do for one reason, that we want to treat the symptom of a low back problem. So what we've done then is we bypass everything that's chiropractic and entered into the game of, of treating symptoms. So we treat symptoms and we, we, we treat conditions when we occasionally get one. And, and the idea is that, that, that when we treat something, we're focusing on treating a, a back problem or shoulder problem or some musculoskeletal problem. And as we focus on that, we lose the focus of, of being specific about adjusting the, 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 the spine specifically for one reason and one reason only, not to get rid of symptoms and not get rid of conditions, but to allow maximum expression of innate through matter. 
So that innate, then, being the intelligent factor that's in all living entities, being the life form or the life uh, component of a, of a physical entity, <laughs> has to be expressing itself through all the matter, and as much as, of, of that matter as it can maximally. So when innate expresses itself maximally through matter, then matter has the ability to function normally and to, to be able to metabolize, replicate, and do all the functions that normally a, a tissue cell does. We see the sickness developing in the, excuse me, in the tissue cells that eventually takes over the organ, and then eventually takes over the organism. And so the, the health of the tissue cell is very important. And how do we uh, deal with that chiropractically is that we don't designate what tissue cell is going to be involved or what area of the body is going to be involved. We simply find the subluxation that we know to be the major, and we adjust that, and then we maintain that long enough for the body to, again, to express itself maximally. That is to say that the innate intelligence expresses itself maximally through matter, thereby allowing the body the potential to heal itself, period. That's the end of chiropractic. Find the, the subluxation, correct it, maintain the correction, get out of the way intellectually, educatedly, and letting the, the innate processes take over. That, that not only did that process create the body, but it, 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 it recreates the body on a regular basis. And it is the process that does the healing. So it naturally, it's, it's easy and simple and plain to say that the power that made the body heals the body, and that power is the intelligence that's in the body that we call innate intelligence. So it's as simple as that. So we need to, you know, those of us that don't have a, the ability to, to locate and correct specifically uh, spinal uh, vertebrae, we need to go to a technique class that, that, that teaches us that. We need to get into more of the green books and attend more of the philosophy meetings that teaches us and reminds us of what innate is, what it does, why it does it. So if we understand the subluxation and we can clear it and we understand the process of innate intelligence within all living entities, and then we do that with love, and, and then it, it, it's a matter of us being able to see more and more and more people healing up of a variety of things, period. Not that we're doing the healing, but that they're doing the healing because we corrected the subluxation, giving back once again, the marriage of innate and, and, and matter. So put that in your pipe and smoke it for a little bit. Now, next, next thing that I find fault with is this. I talk to chiropractors, I have been talking to chiropractors been for a long, long time. And the thing that I notice more and more of is that people are having problem, budgetary problems. Uh, I've had people say, well, I, I can't afford to send out 5,000 pieces of literature. I can't afford to advertise. I can't afford to do dinners. I can't afford to do that. I can't afford to do this. I can't afford to do that. I can't travel to, do a, uh, to, a, to a philosophy meeting. I can't go to the gatherings. All kinds of nonsensical things. Now, let's, let's think about this. If, if a chiropractor who's been in practice for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years still having f f financial problems, it's apparent that that person is not practicing chiropractic doesn't understand chiropractic and doesn't understand what he or she is supposed to be doing. Because the reality is that if, you're, if, if we are educating our people, teaching them what innate is, teaching them what the subluxation is, teaching them how they got sick, how they can get well, teaching them about the time factor, and, and, and we are then capable of, of correcting the subluxation and we do it with absolute love, then these individuals, not only are they going to be healing up, but they're going to refer. They're, they're going to re when, when you get a, several cancer people in a month's time, several blind eyes coming back, several deaf ears coming back, several uh, lung abscesses, several stomach ulcers, several colitis, clearing up, and you're going to end up with a lot of referrals, and, and there's no doubt about that. So what we need to do is, is come to the realization as, as to why we're not attracting more people, why we aren't making more money, why we aren't doing the things that we need to do, and, and a lot of it is that, that, that the, the process of reporting to people is, is so, so long and so intricate and so boring that people don't even pay attention to what you say, and even though you talk to them for an hour. The idea isn't to talk to people a long time. The idea is to talk to them a short time with a lot of emotion and a lot of, <coughs> of sense um, being put into it. I'll give you an example about a report of findings in just a minute. But I want to carry on with this idea. 
when 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 I was in Florida, uh, we had citrus trees, and we had a little about a quarter acre of citrus trees, and then I had three trees that, that I planted in the backyard. And uh, what I noticed was that there was not an endless supply of oranges. The oranges would come, and then they'd be removed, and we either gave them away or ate them ourselves or or whatever we did with them. But they, they, there was not a constant supply of, of oranges. However, there was a repeated supply of oranges. So that during the season, there'd be a little flower come, then a little green marble, and then from that green marble, over a period of time, we'd have an orange, a full-blown orange. Now, the supply was never ending, but the supply was always there. Does that fact make sense to you? In other words, the production wasn't never ending. However, the supply was always there, and the supply was the universal law that's in the orange tree. Just as if I were to plant radishes, there is a universal law that in the seeds of the, that produces a radish. There's a universal law in everything that goes on, everything that's alive and vital and functional. And there's a universal law in you and I. Now, that law, when the, when it's when it's directed through the orange, and the orange is, is, is abiding by the law 100%, it gets oranges every year. If it's a radish, it, it, we, we get radishes every time. We get onions every time. We get corn every time. We get tomatoes every time. We don't do put one thing in, and the law decides to create something else. Now, when you are practicing, as you're supposed to be practicing, chiropractic, and with the sole purpose of, of adjusting a, a vertebral subluxation to allow maximum expression of that intelligence through matter, then, and, and, and that's the law. The universal law says that there is a law within all living entities. There is a law within you and I. And if we depend on that law and quit depending on manipulation and, and, and insurance companies and things outside of ourselves and, and, and cheating and lying and squeezing and, and, and competing and simply depend on the law, allowing the law to produce for us, allowing the law to function in us as it always does regardless, and, and we don't turn it off by, by lousy thinking or we don't turn it off by lousy thinking and lousy talking, then we can allow the law to produce not only a volume of people, uh, but when we have a volume of people and we're collecting money for that because that's the law of exchange, we end up with a lot of money. And there's no reason for us then to have a budgetary problem. There's no reason why we can't, can't create a million dollars a year. Uh, no reason, at least seven or eight hundred thousand dollars a year. Because how many people does it take for you to, to adjust in a month's time with with whatever fees you're charging and over a period of a year to create a million dollars, for instance. And, and, and but they're not, but the purpose of chiropractic is not simply to make a million dollars, but there's nothing wrong with getting a million dollars for the services that you provide. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, and particularly when you provide it to a volume of people with love and, and, and you're highly motivated to serve these people and to give your talents to these people by correcting subluxations to allow, once again, the power that made the body to heal the body, period. That's the end of it. And now, when we do our talks, some of us want to talk for an hour, hour and a half, thinking more is better. And I'm here to tell you that more is, is not better. That your talk, everyone should be receiving information about what you do and why you do it and how you do it. And it should be within a 20-minute period at max, maybe 25 minutes. And then when we do the report of findings, if we have used education as a tool, for instance, uh, we have we have uh, DVDs, as you well know, some of you, that, that talk about the, 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 the consultation, talks about the, and what we're looking for, why we're looking for, talks about why we x-rayed people, talks about symptoms, and then it talks about maintenance. And then we had those created in, Marco Boni in, in Spain had them created in Spanish, so they're available to the, to the people in Spain. Now, what those do is begins to, from the very beginning, to educate people as to what we're doing from a principal viewpoint, from a law's viewpoint. And then as we go on and we give the talk, either before we ever take care of the people, which is probably the, the best way, or within the second or third visit. And, and then when we do the report of findings, that report of findings should be very simple 
It should be just within maybe two or three minutes at the most. And, it, and if we've set it up and we've talked to people about what we do, explain what a subluxation is, explain what NA does, how they got sick, how they get well, have explained it on DVDs and in a talk, by the time we put the x-rays up, for instance, and we have an AP and ladder on flexion and extension or whatever we whatever views we've used, we can pinpoint and say, there is the guy that's got you. That's the bone that's squeezing on the brain stem, shutting life off into your body. You cannot function with no life coming from your brain into the body, and that's the culprit. That's the problem. We've got to correct that. And the whole purpose of you being here is for me to be able to correct that, and not for, based on how you feel, not based on symptoms, not based on anything. This is the cause. We remove the cause. Everything else takes care of itself. So we correct that in time and, 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 and manage it in time. And so we're going to be able to do that. We're going to bring you in every day for five days. And at the end of five days, seeing how things go, we're going to just drop you back to once a week. Now we'll bring you in once a week for a year. It's as simple as that. And that'll, that'll take care of it and, and probably go way beyond taking care of it. But the idea is that you're going to be able to have a body that works the way it's supposed to work. So, is there any reason you can't do this? And they say, no, there's no reason we can't do it. I say, well, that's very good because if there is, I want you to tell me right now. Because if you can't do what you need to do to get this job done, then don't start because there's nothing I can do to help you. I cannot help you if you don't do what you have to do if you're not willing to co-opt. And, and it's just impossible. Now, there are times when people say, yeah, there is a problem. Now, what is it? Well, it's a job-related or some, 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 something that's legitimate. I say, well, we'll work around it. It'll just take us longer, that's all. It may, it may take us a little longer to get the job done. Maybe not. I don't know. But we'll work around that, so no problem. And then they go in for their, for their fees. And the girl offers them a, a year's care, offers them six months' care, three months' care. Or the man, if you have a man doing that. And, and that's it. It's as simple as that. It's no big deal about this whole thing. If they're going to do it, then they do it. If they're not going to do it, tell me right now you're not going to do it. And I, we won't bother. And, and I, I don't know. I, I find the chiropractors are afraid to dictate to people what they're going to have people do in their office. When I go to a dentist, there's no, they, they, they tell me what, they, what they're going to do. And then I do it or I don't do it. When I go to, a, to a, 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 whomever, even when I go to get my car service, they tell me what they're going to do and if I either do it or don't do it. There's no in-between. And that's the way it needs to be in our offices. This is what I do. This is my procedure. You fit that procedure or you need to go somewhere else. And, and I think the chiropractors are afraid to let people go somewhere else. They're afraid to dictate what needs to be going on. I, I had a sign up in my office for years, two signs as a matter of fact. One said, don't let the inmates uh, run the, the asylum. That's the one thing. And the other thing was, if you know more about what I do than I do, you stay home and I'll come see you. And that's very plain, very plain. Either that's the way we do it or we don't do it. And if you take charge of that, you're going to find more and more people cooperating. You're going to find more and more people sticking with you long periods of time. And you're going to find more and more people referring because you're, you're suggesting that and you're getting better results. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that. In this 16 to 17 minute clip at the beginning, Dr. Sigafus touches on two different questions. One, why are we not getting all the miraculous cases we used to? And two, why are you as a chiropractor having budgetary problems? Let's jump into the first question. Why are we not getting all the miraculous cases we used to? Dr. Sig states that the primary reason is that the schools are teaching the stuff we don't need to learn and not teaching the things that we do need to learn. He goes on to say that when we are not philosophically sound and not aware of the principle and that we have not learned anything about innate or we, we have but we have forgotten it, we begin to listen to our patients' complaints instead of finding and correcting the subluxation. Dr. Sig goes on to state that we need to focus on maximum expression of innate through matter so that matter can function normally. At this point, he proposes a question, are you treating symptoms? As we focus on treating the symptoms, we lose the focus of what we truly do, that being the finding of the subluxation, adjusting it, and getting out of the way so that innate can do its job. We need to stop thinking that we know more than our body and innate does. If you understand the subluxation and innate and matter and we act out of love, we will find that there's a marriage between innate and matter 
and that if we get out of our educated mind and follow the guides of universal law and educate our patients simply on what it is we truly do and then do only what we truly do, then your practice will present itself with people who are hungry for the knowledge that you possess. Now, you have to understand that this is what I'm getting from what Dr. Sigafus is saying. Your best bet is to listen to this audio over and over again and figure out for yourself what Dr. Sig is saying to you. The second question that Dr. Sig proposes is, why are you, as a chiropractor, still having budgetary problems? If you've been practicing for 10, 15, 20, 25 years, and you are still having budget problems, then you are doing something wrong, he says. If you are educating your people on what NA is and on what the subluxation is and the time that it is going to take, then chiropractic will work and they will refer and you will be busier than you could ever imagine and then you will not have any budgetary problems. When Dr. Sickler says educate, I think he seems to be saying educate them quickly and consistently and constantly not in long, boring, drawn out manner to where the patient's eyes glaze over and they start thinking about what's for dinner or for breakfast tomorrow morning. He recommends 20 to 25 minute max. When you practice the right way and you are following the law of chiropractic, then you will produce and combine that with positive thinking, then the law will produce for us large volumes of people. And with the law of exchange, there will be no budgetary problems. At this point, Dr. Sigafus asks, are you afraid to dictate to the patient what needs to be done? If your patient is not willing to follow your care plan, then by all means, tell them not to start. It is a waste of their time and their money, and not to mention a waste of your time as well. Dad used to have two signs in his office. Well, actually he had many, but in the audio, he talks of two signs in particular. The first one was, don't let the inmates run the asylum. <laughs> And the second one, and my most favorite, if you know more about what I do than I do, then you stay home and I'll come see you. You see, Dr. Sig Sigafus does not want you to be afraid of telling the patients that they need, tell the patients what they need. And if they do not want to listen to you, then they need to go someplace else. We cannot forget about the law of attraction. This law is in you. It is in all things. What you think and what you say is what you get. If you get nothing else from this consultation call, I ask that you walk away with one thing from it today. Greatness is inherent in all of us. Well, thank you for listening in on this podcast today. And, and to be honest, this was a bit emotional for me. I know I have many, many more of these consultation calls but there was something hard for me to digest knowing that this was his last. I will be seeing you again soon, so take care until next week. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. If you're interested in more of Dr. Sigafus's material, head on over for your daily dose of chiropractic philosophy to www.sigafus.com and register for our free newsletter and to find today's audio clip of Dr. Sigafus in its entirety. Remember to give, love, do, and serve.